I hope you enjoyed reading Susan Glaspell's play, Trifles. I have to tell you, it's one of my favorite all-time plays. Uh, and Susan Glaspell is a really interesting and important figure in American theater history. She was born in 1876 in Iowa. She dies in 1948. She does a lot of different things during her life and career. She was um, a playwright, as you know, and she was a director. She helped run the Provincetown Players, co-founded it. She was a novelist. She was a journalist. That was her first job. More on that in a moment. And she was an actress as well. Um, many people wrote in the period about how impressive she was as a performer on stage. She went to college at Drake University in Iowa. She was a philosophy major there. And she dominated in the very male world of competitive debate while she was in college. She graduated from college, immediately got a job t uh, writing as a reporter for the Des Moines Daily News there in Des Moines, Iowa, and she covered legal cases predominantly. More on that also in a minute. She resigned from that job at age 24. She became a fiction writer then full-time. She'd already sold a few short stories, but she turned full-time to writing. In her writing, we see a strong interest in social issues, in questions of gender and ethics, um, and we also see deep and sympathetic female characters and also sympathetic male characters. Uh, she marries George Cram Cook in 1913. She had met him in Iowa. He was a university English professor at the time. He's a good deal older than she was. They moved to New York City. There they became involved in artistic circles and they founded the Provincetown Players together, going off out of New York in the summers to Cape Cod, Massachusetts with some of their friends like Robert Edmund Jones and Eugene O'Neill to make summer theater on a wharf in Cape Cod and uh, Provincetown. Then they came back in the fall of 1916 to start a year-round theater in Greenwich Village the Provincetown Players, and you'll remember that they called their theater the Playwrights Theater because they wanted to help promote new American plays. And one of those playwrights who benefited was Susan Glassful herself. Um, she'll have a long and interesting career after the Provincetown Players, after she leaves the Provincetown Players. It will reorganize into um, a new entity with including people like Eugene O'Neill, and she will go with Cook to Greece, where they'll live for a while. He'll die while they're in Greece. He's unfortunately an alcoholic and had poor health. She comes back. She continues to write. And in fact, in 1931, Susan Glassville wins the Pulitzer Prize for drama. 1931, she won the Pulitzer Prize for her play, Allison's House, sort of based on the life of Emily Dickinson. Look for that play, Allison's House, 1931. Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Uh, she also, in the 1930s, would help lead the Federal Theater Project, the FTP, which was a Depression-era uh, government um, massive project that helped employ theater artists all around the country. She writes Trifles in 1916. It's first performed at the Summer Theater in uh, Provincetown in, in the summer of 1916. And in that original production, she was a, one of the actresses. She played Mrs. Hale. That's the farmer's wife in that original production. The play is based on a case that Susan Glaspell covered as a reporter in 1900. She was deeply involved in covering this case, uh, amassed lots of interviews and documents around it, which were later used in the appeal related to the case. The case was um, about a woman who was accused of having killed her husband. She said she did not kill him. She said an intruder killed him, but she was convicted for the murder. And one of the pieces of evidence used to convict her was testimony from some people in the town that he abused her. So the fact that he was abusive towards her was proof that she must have killed him. Interestingly, their children um, who many of whom were older, you know, we're not talking about little kids, testified in court that their parents had a perfect relationship and that he never abused her. Um, the suspicion is that they said this because if it were revealed that he was abusive towards her, it would make it more likely she had killed him. So uh, out of an act of solidarity for their mother, they testified that their father had not abused her when he probably really did. That's really twisted. Um, this whole case 
really affected Susan Glaspell. It's probably why she stopped being a journalist. And several years later, she turns that experience into a place. She said she wrote it in like, you know, 10 days or something once she decided to write it. And later, a year later, she actually turns the same plot, the same incident into a, a short story. It's called A Jury of Her Peers. It comes out in 1917. It's often uh, in anthologies of short stories. It's a very fine short story. It's the same story, the same subject matter, because Susan Glasswell kept processing it over and over in her mind. She was fascinated and um, upset by this incident. What 